Player Rose explained the Trek Quartista, Diego Maradona, Kaka and Lionel Messi. Before the video starts make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you don't miss out on any of the tactical analysis, scout reports or snap documentary videos coming up over the next few weeks. Also check out the video we've just released on what Jesse Lingard has in common with Lil Nas X and our comparison of Marcus Rashford and Anthony Martial as a centre forward. This will be the first video of our Player Roles Explained series where we'll tactically analyse not just different positions in the system but also the different roles in that particular position. For example, Paul Pogba and N'Golo Kante are both central midfielders, but they are different types of central midfielders and play different roles with specific jobs for their sides. The first player role we'll be looking at is the Trek Quartista. Trek Quartista is Italian for three quarters, which means that a player playing in the Trek Quartista role plays three quarters up the pitch. To be more specific, the Trek Quartista is a type of advanced midfielder, playing in front of the central midfielders but behind the centre forward. Other types of advanced midfielders consist of Agance, second strikers and three eights. The Trek Quartista differs from these types because the player is given more freedom in the side when in possession, able to roam wherever the space may be, wherever that be out wide, in between the two centre backs, in the half spaces or directly behind the striker. The Trek Quartista can be a natural centre forward or a natural advanced midfielder, but in the role in the system he will inhabit the same positional movements, function in the team and have the same skill set. The Trek Quartista was popularised in the 1980s with Diego Maradona being the prime example. In the 1986 World Cup, Argentine manager Carlos Bilaldo used a 4-3-1-2 and a 4-3-2-1 system throughout the tournament. In both systems, Maradona was deployed ahead of the midfield but in behind the front line. Three quarters of the way up the pitch you could say, playing as a 1 in the 4-3-1-2 and then alongside Claudio Borghi and then Hector Enrique as a 2 behind the centre forward Valdano in the 4-3-2-1. Maradona was given the freedom to drift around the pitch when Argentina had possession, with the rest of the side keeping their shape which would allow space to develop or Maradona to double up with another teammate in a certain area. The player who would later be the man of the 1986 World Cup was Argentina's focal point, main creator but would also move up the pitch into the front line to find goal scoring opportunities, which was the exact function of a Trek Quartista. In the 1990s, Alessandro Del Piero was probably the best Trek Quartista in world football, along with Roberto Baggio, who was in his prime around 1994, but from 1995 to the 2000s, Del Piero overtook him as a superior player. Del Piero was deployed in a similar way to how Maradona was in the 1986 World Cup, the Marcelo Lippi's Juve side. In the 1996-97 campaign, Lippi played a 4-3-1-2, with Zidane in behind Del Piero and one of either Christian Vieri, Ellen Boscovich or Michel Podovano. Similar to the role of Maradona in Bullardo's 4-3-2-1, Del Piero would play as a track producer slightly higher up the pitch than the other advanced midfielder, who in 1996 was Zidane. The Trek Quartista isn't just a playmaker, he must also have the finishing ability of a striker accompanied with the dribbling ability of a winger, so it should be more of a goal scoring threat than an Agance, which is why he's given more positional freedom in the side. Del Piero finished 4th in the Ballon d'Or list in 1995 and 1996 and scored 32 goals in 46 games in the 1997-98 season which proved that he was probably one of the finest Trek Quartistas of the 1990s. A more modern example of the classic Trek Quartista could be Kaka who played as one of the two advanced midfielders in a 4-3-2-1 Christmas tree system. In the 2003-2004 Scudetto winning season, he played alongside Rui Costa and in the 2006-2007 Champions League winning season, he played alongside Seedorf in that role. Like Maradona and Del Piero who also played as one of the two advanced midfielders behind the main striker, Kaka was a Trek Quartista who would be positioned higher up the pitch and given more freedom than the Agance type advanced playmaker next to him, either Seedorf or Rui Costa. Kaka had the passing, dribbling and finishing ability to perform this role excellently. Many consider Kaka as the last true Trek Quartista and say the death of the world came about after Pep Guardiola revolutionised modern day tactical systems with the 4-3-3 using a false 9. The false 9 differed from the Trek Quartista as it is a role that is played further up the pitch, starting as a centre forward and dropping deep into the half spaces from the forward line. Whilst the main purpose of the Trek Quartista is to get the best out of the creativity of one player, the false nines movement is designed not only to get that player, who was Lionel Messi and Guardiola's side, onto the ball in good positions, but also to drag opposition players with him, out of position and create space for other players, particularly the wide attackers, to make runs into. A false nine and a Trek Quartista cannot play in the same system, as both move into the same sort of positions in the half spaces and in behind the forward line and basically perform the same role in the side, making it counterproductive to have both in your system. This meant that when Guardiola popularised the false nine centre forward and the two wide attacking inside forwards, the Trek Quartista role fell out of favour amongst coaches. However, as we know, the football tactical system goes around in cycles and it seems that the Trek Quartista role could be making a renaissance. 
With the Meza Urzil Gonche type of advanced midfielder going out of fashion, with sides attacking with quicker transitions and opposition sides using defensive midfielders to mark this sort of play out of the game, some managers are now using more of a Trequatista as a main advanced creator in the side, giving them more freedom and often moving wide players who are excellent dribblers but have good vision and passing ability inside into this role. A good example of this, ironically, is a man who originally killed a Trequatista, Lionel Messi. With Valverde opting to use a 4-4-2, 4-2-3-1 variation system, the Rome Messi played in 2009-2010 as a false 9 and in 2014-15 as an inside forward from the right are no longer there. Messi now plays in a front 2 behind Luis Suarez, or this season most probably Antoine Griezmann. Messi is ridiculous in terms of creativity and goal scoring output, so it only makes sense to give him ultimate freedom in the system playing as a Trek Batista while players around him remain positionally disciplined in possession and the likes of Rakitic and Vidal are there to make up for the lost defensive output with Messi maintaining his attacking position out of possession. Other examples of Trek Batistas could be Griezmann at Atletico Madrid over the past few seasons playing in a structured 4-4-2 behind a main striker. Memphis Depay at Lyon when he moves inside playing in field behind Moussa Dembele or even Jao Felix at Atletico Madrid who has been used in this row in the first few games of the season playing in Simeone's 3-5-1-1 system behind Morata or the 4-4-2 diamond alongside Morata with Lamar behind them. The Trequatista, despite being a rare role in modern football, is one positional role that has been inhabited by some of the best creative players throughout the past 30 years and could be set to make a comeback in the next few seasons. Thank you for watching, remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the other episodes in the Player Row series.